Whoever approved Miami's schedule for the 2023 season should be sitting in a jail cell right now. This, this right here, should be a crime. What's going on, Canes fans? Now listen up. I fully understand that the schedule for the Miami Hurricanes was released several weeks ago, but... As many of you know, I took a break from YouTube after the unexpected death of my younger brother, so I haven't had an opportunity to give my two cents on it. And by give my two cents on it, I mean complain about it. I mean, literally, what is this? What am I looking at? What? Now, some of you are scratching your head, but many of you that have been around on my channel for a while probably know why I'm upset about it. Now, before we dive into today's video, make sure that you check out the top link down in the description to join the completely free Coach Coop Discord. There's a little over 500 people in it as we speak, and we talk Miami Hurricanes football 24-7, 365, plus lots of other stuff. We just jump in there and have a good time. It's a very family environment, and I think you should check it out. But anyways, as you can see, I've pulled up the 2023 schedule and I'm just going to briefly go game by game, take a look at the dates, and then I'll also tell you the series for each of those games. So who's winning it, Miami or the opponent. And then I will also tell you the final score the last time that we played that team. And then maybe, you know, just give you a little bit of something, something about the team that we're facing. Now, I do need to let you guys know that I'm keeping it brief. I'm going to be quick. And also there are no predictions in this video. No season prediction, no game by game prediction. I repeat, no predictions in this video it's just way too early guys spring practice has not even happened yet it's it's too early to do my way too early season prediction at this point in time however if you want to do that if you're comfortable doing it you can pop it down in the comment section below so week one we kick it off with miami of ohio not to be confused with the real miami the miami hurricanes now right out of the gate as you can see this is a Friday game. I absolutely despise weekday games. Now, at least for week one, it is opening week. So, you know, they do a lot of weird stuff like Friday, Saturday, Sunday games. So I'll, I will let it pass for the opening week. But anyways, the history between these two teams, Miami is leading the series three to nothing, and the last matchup was way back in 1987 before I was even born, and Miami won that game 54 to three. Now coming up in week two, we have the Texas A&M Aggies rematch, except in 2023, it's going to be on our turf. Now this series is tied at two games apiece, and the last matchup was, of course, last year in 2022, uh, where Miami lost 17 to 9. Now, is this going to be a scenario where Miami comes back and blows the doors off of the Aggies? They had that mass exodus there. Yeah, we lost a lot of players too, but time will tell. As I said, no predictions, but I would absolutely love to beat Jimbo at Hard Rock Stadium. Next up, week three, and here we go. A Thursday game. What? I mean, really? A Thursday game two weeks previously? Before that, we had a Friday game. And then now you're telling me week three into the Miami Hurricanes 2023 season, we have to play on a Thursday night after playing the Aggies the previous... Bro, anyways, um, Miami is leading that series six to nothing and the last matchup was in 2022 where miami won 70 to 13. this really just this gets my blood boiling man i cannot stand weekday games and as i said whoever approved this schedule bro they need to be in jail i don't know maybe a federal prison i something this is just absolutely ridiculous but 
let's continue. Uh, of course, it would have been interesting here if uh, Ed Reed would have remained the coach at Bethune Cookman, but that didn't work out. Uh, that would have been that would have made this game a lot more interesting with him traveling back to Hard Rock and taking on the team where he was previously the chief of staff. But that's not the case. Moving on. Next up, we got the Temple Owls. Not a whole lot to say about Temple, man. I'm not even going to give them a ton of screen time. Miami leading that series 13 to one. The last matchup was back in 2005, and Miami won that game 34 to three. Now, after Temple, we do get a bye week before we take on Georgia Tech at Hard Rock Stadium. Miami leads that series 14 to 13, not by as much as as you would think, because a lot of times Georgia Tech is a it's it's up or down, man. You know what I mean? It's it's one year it's Miami, one year it's Georgia Tech, and a lot of times those games are too close for comfort. Uh, the last matchup was in 2022, which Miami did win pretty comfortably. 35 to 14. So next up here, before we scroll down, the showdown against the North Carolina Tar Heels. This is a team that has had our name for a minute. And honestly, I cannot wait for Drake May to graduate or go to the NFL and for Mac Brown to retire. But anyways, North Carolina leads the series in this one, 13 to 11. And the last year, Miami lost in a close one. 27 to 24. So can this finally be the year that Miami takes care of business against UNC at UNC in Chapel Hill? Your boy Coop is hoping and praying. So with the first half of the season complete, we're going to take a look at the final six games here for the Miami Hurricanes. And we are going to run it back against Clemson in 2023, except it's going to be at Hard Rock this year. Clemson needs no introduction. What else do you want me to say? They lead the series 7-6, to six, and last year they beat us 40-10. to 10. Moving on. Uh, after that is Virginia, and an interesting fact here about Virginia, the last five games have been one-score games. So typically, the Cavaliers versus the Hurricanes has been a pretty tight one. Let's see if we can hopefully change that in 2023. Miami leads this series 12 to 8 in the game last year in 2022. Miami won again a close one 14 to 12. Now after Virginia, we have NC State and this is going to be in North Carolina. Uh, Miami has won 5 of the last 7 against the Wolfpack. Miami leads the series 11-5 to pretty comfortably, and the last time we played NC State was back in 2021, and Miami won that game 31-30. to After that, the Canes travel to Dope Campbell Stadium to try and get revenge on the Florida State Seminoles. And let me tell you, the last two matchup against the Seminoles has not been pretty. Uh, I know for a fact last year because... Uh, your boy Coop was there in person, and let me just tell you, I've tried my best every single day since then to remove it from my memory, but unfortunately, so far, I've been unsuccessful. I really think the only way to remedy that, to get rid of this sick feeling in my stomach every time I see that garnet in gold, is to beat them at Dope Campbell Stadium this year in 2023. I think that will fix it. I think that will take care of everything for me. So Mario Cristobal, I'm going to need you to help me out a little bit this year in 2023. But overall, Miami does lead the series 35-32. to 32. I have to mention the score from last year. Nope. And coming up on the last two games of the schedule, we then take on Louisville. Uh, we have won the last two games by putting up a combined 99 points. That's a pretty good look for the Canes against Louisville. Miami leads the series 11-3, and the last matchup was back in the COVID season in 2020. Miami won that one 47-34, a pretty high-scoring affair. And last but not least, another Friday game. What? Are you freaking kidding me? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Three weekday games for the Miami Hurricanes in 2023. You want to talk about getting the short end of the stick? 
Three weekday games? That's three games that we have less time to prepare. Does anybody else in college football, please chime in. Does anybody else have three weekday games on their schedule? I understand there are multiple teams that have a a Friday game sprinkled in here or a special Sunday kickoff game sprinkled in over here. But does any other team have three weekday games? Now, I know, guys, we're talking about uh, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. We'll line it up any day of the week. We'll run it back. I agree. But, you know, we ain't been good in a hot minute. It's been a long time. We've not been able to brag for a while. And to give us a, 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 a Miami team that has a new OC, new DC, still trying to find that chemistry, still trying to figure out what we're all about, our first really, really good recruiting class that I felt good about in a long time, and we have three weekday games this season. So there's no doubt that the odds are kind of stacked against us when it comes to not talking about strength of schedule, but just the, the days that we're actually playing. This is all, This is Black Friday. This is... The day after Thanksgiving, you want to talk about distractions. Would th- would this be the red bandana game for BC? I freaking hope not because it's it's in Chestnut Hill. This is late November, possibly going to be cold. Red bandana game, day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. So the more I talk about it, the more depressed I get. Miami leads the series, twenty four to six. Uh, we've lost three of the last four against Boston College, so that's a, a little scary as well. Last matchup was in 2018. Miami lost 27 to 14. Man, I I really what, what sucks, guys, is I don't hate this schedule. I love getting to run it back against A and M at Hard Rock. I love running it back against the Tigers. At Hard Rock, getting a chance at redemption against North Carolina, uh, Miami, Ohio. That game's going to be hyped up because it's going to be like, who's the real Miami? You know what I'm saying? NC State on there again, trying to beat Florida State at Dope Campbell would be nice. Just the weekday games, man. That, that That's really the issue for me is, is the weekday games. Uh, obviously, we're not going to talk about ACC Championship because 5-7 uh, and seven in 2022 – I'm going into 2023 with minimal expectations. This, you know, it, originally we were going to be able to have a baseline from 2022, and then we could gauge 2023 off of that, kind of compare the two. Fortunately, but also unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, if we see improvement, then it's fortunately. If we backpedal, it's unfortunately. But 2023 creates a scenario where we're kind of getting our baseline again. So we're going to kind of see how we look. Now we do have some big time recruits coming in, which will hopefully help. But then we take and the the 2024 season, we will gauge, we will base from the 2023 and see if we make progress. Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But you still got to have high expectations. But I'm not expecting a whole lot in 2023. I'm taking the wait and see approach like I should have been doing way back whenever I first started doing this thing. Anyways, let me know down in the comment section below if weekday games bother you as much as they bother me. If you want to give a prediction, if you can, if, if you want to trash talk a little bit, whatever you want to do, I just want to see some interaction down in the comment section below. I just wanted to come on and vent about the weekday games. Remember though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family, but at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the U. Coach Coop, peace out. I'll see you all in the next one.